incidence of lung cancer increases with smoking. So at least uh, for the Philippine government, they have already f uh, found ways of trying to uh, prevent smoking in public places. There are laws now that have been passed wherein people cannot just smoke anywhere, um, especially in the malls or in, in just the regular commuting areas like in the private uh, in the public utility vehicles, you cannot just smoke anywhere. There are already designated um, smoking areas. I think that's a huge step in trying to prevent lung cancer in the Philippines. Information campaign is really very, very important. Um, unfortunately, right now, the, the, the need for um, better access to medicine is uh, a problem. Um, our government has uh, projects for other cancers. They've actually started with breast cancer prevention. Um, still trying to move on to the other lung cancer, uh, to the other cancers like ca lung cancer. Um, but because of meager resources, we just usually have to um, kind of prioritize the the more common cancers. Um, but um, in terms of uh, campaign, there are not a lot of lung advocacy groups in the Philippines. And like as I've mentioned, with breast and cancer advocacy, they have more. Um, the reason for that probably is lung cancer patients die earlier. They have a shorter lifespan. They only leave, when they get diagnosed, they live like for only six months to three years at the most if they get treatment. And unfortunately, really finances are a burden. So a person who gets diagnosed with lung cancer, especially if they're in the lower income generating group, they'd rather just stay at home and you know, just, just let it be. And like for the... Um, more uh, the the more affluent families then that's the time that they can pursue treatment and because it's diagnosed late usually that's the problem people don't really come for general checkups on a regular basis people usually come when they're already symptomatic they're feeling the difficulty of breathing already or they're feeling the cough that's not going away and that's the only time that they see us but for a regular person maybe a 40 year old person who goes to work every day an annual checkup is not really something that is um, commonly done okay because it's expensive it's all it will um, um, there is some cost to it to it okay CT scan is expensive CT scan is quite expensive so um, it's we still have out of packet uh, expenses so the regular checkups are not um, shouldered by the government yet and there's no government insurance that will really cover for for the usual routine checkups the government insurance is more of um, um, what do you call this for for times when you're already admitted in the hospital but not really for outpatient screening procedures there we don't really have screening for for these kinds of cancers well in terms of uh, availability of drugs we have the more common drugs we have the the usual chemotherapeutic drugs we already have uh, on hand the targeted agents but again they are they are ex quite expensive um, in terms of the newer generation drugs the immunotherapeutic drugs those are not available yet um, at present time they are just being launched um, we just um, have them on clinical trials uh, but it will but take quite a while, I think, for all the immunotherapeutic drugs to be coming into the market. So that's the little challenge um, we have to import from other countries um, because we have to wait for them to be commercially available. Radiotherapy, they have a very good package. The Philippine Health Insurance System has a very good uh, package for radiotherapy, but for chemotherapy, not yet. We, we, we have yet to develop that aspect. Uh, I think we're becoming the capital of call centers. So call centers in the Philippines are rising left and right. And it's just unfortunate that we have a lot of our younger um, generation who get into the call centers and they have to stay awake at, uh, at night with very terrible working hours. And sometimes smoking is a way to get out. <laughs> you know, S Smoking is their way to take away the stress. So uh, we are a little afraid that because of this um, new job, considered new job that has come up in the Philippines, um, the future we might be seeing more lung cancer cases in the women. Right now what is happening? Uh, are you seeing 
women well there's still more men more at present women. time but the call but centers just came in the past yeah. five years so uh, I'm not so sure maybe our statistic statistics might change in the next few years right. that is the challenge that it's really a challenge to inform people so we really have to have some form of information dissemination um, about prevention of lung cancers um, for palliative care uh, again that is really a challenge um, most patients especially if they can afford they would just prefer to stay in the hospital where the doctors are and the nurses are because we don't really have uh, groups taking care of patients at home we don't have uh, nursing homes yet that would take care of patients for palliative care but we do have the um, pain management we have uh, anesthesiologists who are specialized in pain management we can administer that but if we call uh, if we consider nursing homes um, we don't have them yet so it's really like for me it is a challenge when I have patients who just require palliative care um, it's not yet available it's not yet available for the world no tobacco day um, we just want to reiterate um, that there are a lot of factors in in our environment that um, can cause lung cancer uh, pollution in the environment is something we cannot really avoid but for smoking which is the number one cause of lung cancer we really can try our best to not just avoid smoking but to prevent other people from smoking in front of us you know just encourage awareness um, that smoking will not be good for the person's health who smokes and the people be around them as well yeah thank you so much thank you, thank you. Thank you.